This is called the New Media Seminar. And for years, Michael has answered a lot of questions. People come up and ask him, what was the skipper's real name on Gilligan's Island? And why do you call this the New Media Seminar? Because it wasn't about just radio. Radio is certainly it, but when you normally see talk radio, but if you just think radio and that's it, in this social engineering world, you're missing something absolutely pivotal. I listen to our guest, Alex Jones, every single day. Every day, and as I get older, as I'm wizened and hobble into decrepitude, I have, I'm losing my hearing, meaning I get bored very easily. I want excitement. I don't want anybody to... I can assure you, I have never one time ever fought, caught myself in the middle of any of his program. That is critical because it's entertainment and you cannot be entertained when you're asleep. For those of you who might not know, Alex Jones has absolutely seized every delivery system there is. Terrestrial radio, podcasting, studio cams, YouTubes, Twitter, Facebook, uh, nanotechnology. If he could figure out to communicate with bees, somehow he will do it. I don't know how he does it. He does something called a Google bomb. I'm sure you know what that is, right? Let me just say right now, I hope Alex Jones never uses his power for evil. That's all I gotta say. Alex Jones will say, all right, I've got an article and I want everybody to go into your Google search engine and write down, type the following. And within a picosecond, his article is number one in the Google search. If Alex Jones were to say, everybody type in, Michael Harrison is responsible for typhus epidemics. Within a picosecond, the world and forever, Michael Harrison type it. Google then turns around and says, we gotta do something about this. This is not working. YouTubes, he's mastered that. DVDs, documentaries, everything. It, there is simply, in terms of a delivery system, there is absolutely nothing to compare it with. Alexa voted him and constantly says he's the number one alternative media outlet. And I love this term, alternative media, because very shortly, the quote, non-alternative will be alternative. Because this past week, talking about, I hate to say it, Mr. Weider and others, did ABC break that story? No. Wall Street Journal? No. New York Times? No. Alternative media. Alexa shows him number one. Read the hits. Read the absolute quantifiable metrics of what this man does. It's just incredible. Another thing too, as a trial lawyer, I love citation. Opinion is one thing. Tell me where you read this. Tell me where you get this article from. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've heard him say something and I think, no, that, no, that can't be. For example, uh, he'll say something about uh, whatever, uh, George Bush, uh, or this particular leader enjoys microwaving kittens in his spare time. And I'm thinking, now you've gone too far. <laughs> You're making that up. He doesn't microwave kittens and he doesn't drink their blood. And then he'll say, Paul, can we get a camera shot? And there it is. From, you know, every, for like 9,000 sources, they microwave kittens. And what I keep saying to myself is, why am I not reading this? What am I reading? I'm telling you right now, listen to what this man does. Watch what he does. Just next week, just go in, and it will astound you. Because if spoken word, which is what we do, is to survive in this world of YouTube and these ADD people with, with the attention span of a gnat who want to watch a duck playing a piano. <laughs> Who's this sit there with 25 zillion hits. Why, look at that, is a duck playing. This is what we're up against. <laughs> no, I'm serious. So without further ado, I am absolutely honored to introduce to you your guest speaker who is a pioneer. Let me just say this, and I'm not kidding. In the pantheon, in the pantheon, of radio greats, from Rush to Stern, people, name it, and our forebears, Alex Jones will be there because what he's doing is redefining it. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones.
even though I know who that guy is, uh, as everybody does, but I've definitely got to get him on the radio now. That was awesome. And he did steal a lot of my thunder uh, because he's just recognizing reality. Uh, first off, I want to thank everybody for inviting me and the folks that uh, run Talkers. I want to thank Ted Anderson for the last 14 years, uh, backing me up uh, with my radio show as it's uh, grown. And uh, it's great to be here in New York, and I'm glad I flew in after it uh, cooled down a bit because, you know, it's, it's cold down there in Texas. We can't handle the heat. I think that Lionel uh, really encapsulated at the end of his speech where I'm going to begin, and that is there is a great transformation happening. I mean, everybody knows that. And I've been invited here because folks in talk radio realize that uh, there's a storm going on. Well, actually, that's just the front edge. The real storm uh, is coming, and I'll, the landscape uh, of the future is being uh, formed right now. And again, all of that is a basic truth that you know. What's happening is the social engineers, uh, Edward Bernays and others, got a jump on it and realized it, and the Department of War realized it, and they all wrote books, and they said we're going to basically standardize humanity uh, in the same way that Henry Ford was designing the assembly line. Okay, And so what's happened because of the Internet that DARPA and the NSA set up, they openly said in the 60s, this will control everything, we'll track everything in reality, it'll be a total panopticon of surveillance and control so that we can carry out our engineering. And this is all public. Uh, and they said, we'll keep people in this tiny reality while uh, the technocracy develops a separate breakaway civilization. And they call that uh, the New World Order uh, banking cartel, but what's actually happening through that system and, 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 and through the claim of national security, a whole nother world of, of, of technology, black ops, uh, systems has been developed and the whole ruse of terrorism is the pretext to put the uh, clamp down on the population uh, and then also uh, begin to basically come out in the open with the system where you have the trusted travelers, the normal travelers, and the untrusted travelers, and no one knows how you get on those magical lists. It's a new class system, and why do I raise that point? And then I'll get into new media and ideas that I can uh, impart to you if you, th if you think they have any value, and it's this. What's happened is they, they plan to use the worldwide wiretap, the web, as a control grid, but it did blow back. There were individuals that recognized what was happening and uh, desperately used that system in a way that the establishment thought we wouldn't. They overestimated with their hubris and their arrogance because uh, these technocrats literally have uh, serious delusions of grandeur. And because that's happened now, the population uh, has awakened. Now, they haven't awakened to the full spectrum of what's happening, but they've awakened that there's more going on in the world than the top three or four stories every day. And they've awakened to uh, that major changes are happening. And, and in their gut, uh, they're, they're searching. And in that searching and, and, and getting outside the box, to use the cliche, and then getting outside of that box and that box, and really reaching out to people and being real, that's how you connect with them. Folks know that things are canned and packaged and that there is uh, fear in the media and more and more as this collision takes place the system is desperate and that's why we're seeing open discussion uh, by not just the White House uh, regulations, RCAS, Sunstein and others uh, but also from quote conservative circles, you know, the mainline quote liberals that are just two different flavors of Kool-Aid you know, one is uh, strawberry, you know, one is grape, but it's all got the cyanide in it. And people are recognizing that, so there is this perfect storm uh, of government and old media coming in and openly trying to write the narrative right now to begin censoring and taxing and regulating and harassing. And there's a whole constellation of systems they're going to use to do that. And I want to speak uh, to you about that because you guys know that there's a revolution happening in media and that things are changing. Uh, and there's a lot of factors there. It's, it, it's also the fact that we're going into a depression is why uh, your industry, my industry, I don't really consider myself in an industry, uh, I'm on a mission, uh, is in so much trouble. So there's a lot of factors. Remember, I'm going to try to be 
focused in this because there's so many points that I have a tendency to have the long form of talk radio to really be able to you know, flesh out different layers of it. But I'm here to warn you. If you think things are crazy now, notice how everything is accelerating. Everything is quickening as we approach different layers towards technological singularity. Okay? So if you think we're moving fast now, if you think things are changing now, it is going to uh, grow in a hyperbolic curve starting in the next several years. Now, through this crisis, the system is going to come in and has openly announced it's going to go after the web. It's going to go after uh, people like myself. And in that vector, uh, in that target scope, the establishment sees talk radio uh, as a very large part of that enemy complex. So you are seen as the enemy by the social engineers because they can't program you, they can't totally control you, they can't watch everything you're doing. People are able to call in. Regional stories that they don't want out and their compartmentalized uh, matrix can be released. Brush fires can begin very quickly. And number one, scandals of the corrupt decadent elite who've been acting like this for a very long time can now come out and they can't control it. And if you think uh, you know, stuff with wieners wiener is a big deal, it's, it's, it's many levels above that in the type of outright corruption. The establishment is accustomed to this power. They're accustomed to doing whatever they want. And they, they've been very arrogant. And now they're beginning to realize, wait a minute, we got caught with our pants down. I've known for years that my radio show and the stuff I was doing on the Internet from the metrics was bigger than most of the biggest talk show hosts in the country when you added it together. Well, for a long time, I wouldn't brag. And I just sat there and waited because I understood the danger and I needed to get to a point uh, where the enemy went ahead and recognized and began attacking, which was exactly what I wanted because the enemy, the global social engineers, the technocrats, again, maybe intelligent, but at the same time, they have that subconscious arrogance of their ego and their narcissist. And so they still think that when they attack you that it gives them power and that they're discrediting you. But the truth is they could attack a maggot-covered dead dog in a ditch and people would run to the maggot-covered dead dog and begin loving it because they hate the establishment and the system so much. You understand that? <laughs> So the point is the system's running out of bullets, and that's why they're openly now trying to introduce the idea of censorship. And uh, you know, I don't really have to listen to talk radio, though I do addictively. About a month ago, I started getting emails, and my crew was like, listen to this clip, you know, listen to that clip, and they'd queue them up, and I'd hear them. And I heard different national talk shows, some of them on hundreds of stations, saying, I'm not going to go to talkers because Alex Jones is there. And, and, and again, that's that, this is a talk show host, First Amendment, and the system that you are, are using for your livelihood and your passion, that's why you really do it, is you want to communicate with your fellow humans, that basic human trait that makes us human to telegraph knowledge and information, could sit there and say, I don't want to hear Alex Jones speak. And that right there is really running up the white flag. That is, that is somebody showing how, how weak they are and how scared they are. And no matter what happens to Alex Jones, this information is not going away. And then I was seeing other clips of other talk show hosts on their national shows thinking they're hurting me by trying to damage your conference, not, not wanting you to hear what I have to say. I mean, that is so un-American. That's so authoritarian. It's anti-human. And it is the plague. People that talk like that are traitors against liberty and traitors for the First Amendment Free speech is something incredibly rare across the world. Millions have died for it. And we treat it like it's toilet paper. It's not. It's the precious jewel that must be protected above all else. It is the fount of liberty and freedom and private property and our children's future. Everything lies on it. And the attack against free speech is in full gear. What must not be tolerated is any, quote, liberal, libertarian, conservative, you know, in that fake three flavors thing they're offering, who attacks the First Amendment. We need to get organized. We need to make it the issue. I mean, look, if I can routinely do things similar now to what Drudge does and force an issue out and, and, and keep doing it for like a week or two sometimes if I have to, and then I see it blossom and explode, imagine what 
all of us can do if we start defending liberty. If we start not just talking about lining up Arabs and killing them, because that's the new freedom in America, but if we actually uh, really opened up the Declaration of Independence again and said, we're into this, we're not liberal, we're not conservative, we love freedom, we're constitutionalist. Because this isn't about just getting more listeners, this isn't about uh, reaching more people or making more money. If that's what you want, telling the truth, being active, being aggressive, it will all come. But people realize when something's real, and they instinctively make that connection to you when you are telling them the truth or when you are telling them what you believe. There is a war by the monopoly forces that are not free market. They talk about how they're corporate. They talk about free market all day. They're the opposite. And people need to realize and study history, this is common sense, and I'm sure it's a smart crowd here, you know this, that the monopoly men are the absolute enemy of private property and of freedom, of expression, and everything that's good and wholesome. So there's a war against you. You are not there with David Rockefeller. You're not there with Queen Beatrix. You're not there with the rest of the Rockefellers and all you know, the big eight families. This is a mafia. Now, I understand they fund things, they own things, they try to steer things. The point is, it's us or them. You know, Bush gave that speech, it's, you know, you're either with us or you're with the terrorists. Okay, well, you need to make your decision. You're at the crossroads. Choose what side because these globalists will phase you out. These globalists do not want a bunch of people running around that are intelligent and know how to communicate. They want to shut off your systems. So decide who you're going to serve. You've got to serve somebody like Bob Dylan says. Choose what you serve. As for me and my house, I serve the truth because out of that everything good comes. The truth sells. The truth is exciting. People are so tired of the Republican-Democrat football being passed back and forth. They're so tired of politicians uh, trying to craft what they say and be careful and you know, uh, push the same baloney over and over again to where people, exactly what Lionel said, tune out. And if you go to the major studies that are out there, the last 50 years, the brainwaves of North Americans in Canada and the United States particularly, not so much Mexico, the brainwave level has lowered. The IQs have lowered. People are, are in more of a trance-like sleepwalking stage. They're at the point right above that. That's why I can go on a national TV show and get almost no traffic to InfoWars.com, but I go on some Christian station in a city that's got passionate, listening, tuned-in, awake people who aren't in a zombie-like state, literally, and I plug my DVDs and sell a 1,000 of them. Go on CNN, say, get my DVDs at InfoWars.com, sell five. Go on the Christian station with people that care and are awake. Even if you're not a Christian, my point is they're focused. They're into something spiritual. They're, they're into being awake. They're brainwaves when you're in a spiritual state. Psh, go off the chart. They're, they're recognizing things. You go on some you know, uh, conservative station who can't even get phone calls, big station. Like, wow, you talked about another issue we never talked about. The lines have been jammed. They were jammed for two days you know, after you were on. What happened? I talked about something different or I looked at it from a different angle than what you've been doing. If I just sat up here and said, uh, red house, red house, red house, you know, for, for 10 hours, and then for five minutes, you'd get up and walk out. And it's the same thing. And so all these uh, different consultants and people, uh, well, we've got to just go with this parameter. This is what the owners are saying because it's perception management. We've got to keep it in this box. We've got to you know, keep managing society this way. And, and, and oh, you're, you're part of the management team now. You're, you're moving up. Uh, well, the people never really wanted freedom anyways, and they're dumb, and they tear you apart uh, if uh, you know, uh, they ever got into power. You might as well join the system. All of that is a load of crud. The guy, the gal above you giving you this line about join the New World Order, join the corporate Borg, they're expendable. They're being expended. This is a consolidation. This system wants to get rid of basically the wealth of this nation and the world as a way to manage and control you. They are attacking you. Now, how have I been able to reach 25 million people just on one streaming system a month, the other formats, another 14 million or so? How do I have upwards of 600,000 podcast downloads a day? How do I have eight different YouTube channels with over 300 million views in the last two and a half years. Uh, how on every metric are we exponentially growing? That's happening because so much of what I've said, there's a lot of ingredients going to this, but so much of what I've said people have now seen manifest and happen. And they're realizing uh, that, that what I'm covering is important. So there's that ingredient. Also, I'm somebody who started out 16 and a half years ago on Access Television. 
I, I uh, went to community college. I could have gone to UT, but I wanted to go part time because I was working. And uh, it was it, it, they were teaching me antiquated stuff in the two semesters. So I just then tried to go intern at a radio station and saw that there was no future there. So I thought, well, there's Access Television, which again was an electronic soapbox. And then I was able, within a, less than six months, a local radio station came on. And the program director saw me on Access and said, you want a weekend show? And then six months later, you want a Sunday show, not just Saturday. You want to go on weeknights. And then uh, things progressed from that point. But I was always hungry because I had passion to warn people about anti-gun legislation. I mean, I, I wanted to defend my Second Amendment and the North American Union movement to get rid of my country's sovereignty and movements to raise my taxes and, and, and all of this basic fundamental stuff. I didn't approach it as a Democrat or as a Republican or as a Libertarian. I approach it as somebody that doesn't want to be a slave. I approach it as somebody who wants to be free. It's very elementary. What I've done is it, it's, it's an elephant in the room. I'm not that smart. Most of you people here, I've listened to you. You're more eloquent than I am. You've got incredible wordsmiths. You know. You're smart. You know what's going on. All I'm doing is saying, there it is. I mean, this is not rocket science. And so I looked for every crack I could, every way, every system. I, I went on the air. I read the executive orders of Bill Clinton. I, I knew that the United Nations... Uh, was, had already signed a deal for buffer zones around national parks, as they've done in third world countries, where they had taken under UNESCO uh, the, con uh, the uh, control of resources in the world. I went on air and said the UN is taking into receivership these buffer zones. You go, well, they're not mining it. Where's the money? They take it off limits. You understand? And so then that makes their investments next to it go up. You shut down the coal, clean coal in Utah. The only other place they got it's in China, and Bill Clinton's got a deal with them. He shuts that down in the UN agreement. Now they make $20 billion in the metric. See, it's all about planned artificial scarcity. But again, that's the problem. There's just too much data. There's too much information. It's all there. It's like trying to just walk to a mountain vista and stand there and say, well, I'm looking at a mountain and it's very beautiful. You've got to go see it for yourself. You've got to go see the detail. But my point getting into that is that's how I got into filmmaking was because I went on air and said this and I had the executive orders, I had the documents, I had the photos, and people didn't believe me. And they didn't have webcams then in, in, in 1996. That's why I was showing it on Access Television. And I said, well, instead of a newsletter, people don't believe this, I'll travel to these national parks, I'll show it myself. And I politely walk in the Grand Canyon. Hi, I'd like to, uh, where's the UN plaque saying this has been set aside for the UN? We're going to arrest you, right? And all acting guilty and running around like chickens with their heads cut off. And so I said, okay, folks, I'm going to sell a VHS tape, you know, for 10 bucks, and you'll fund me so I can get better cameras. I had a, a secondhand VHS camera that cost about $100. And, and then I went and edited Access TV on 1970s three-quarter inch decks and I'd cut the, cut the, you know, the, the audio on the reels and try to feed it through and, and, I, and I wasn't trained in all of this and I was up till six in the morning every day and not sleeping. That's how I wrecked my looks. You know, from years, from about 96, I was really good looking. From about 96 to 2000 before I finally had enough money and could hire employees, I was sleeping three hours a day and I was doing, doing it with coffee and, 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 and so I transformed into what I am today. But... <laughs> But so, so because I worked my way up in every media and every system trying to learn it, I mean, we would have had a lot more success up until now if I had obviously known all this 16 years ago. I, it's like I don't even know what I learned. I don't even know what I know. I just am able to do it, and I have an instinct for things, and I know how to take a story, put an accurate headline out, but I want it to be read, but then I just know how to put the headline out so it will have the biggest effect. And then I've got my, my crew, and I'm always trying to teach them exactly. I'm like, watch this. This is what I'm going to say about this. This is going to encapsulate what this really does. The system knows how to take something horrible and spin it like it's no big deal. We're going to take something that's hiding in plain view, put a new headline on it, have three-paragraph comment, put a blurb of that, point it out, and everybody goes, whoa, whoa, they have just taken something and totally turned it around. So much of my show is also the interactiveness of it where I'm putting out announcements for people to do searches. They go and they discover it for themselves and I'm not lying to them. They find other things and send it to me. So there's that interaction there. I mean, there's so many things that uh, tie into this. Uh, and I sit there and talk to my producers on air, tell them what I want. It's really behind the scenes when I've got my uh, reporters at Bilderberg right now. I get them on air and I sit there and I direct them on air. I'm transparent. I'm transparent. I am out in the open. I tell you really what I think. And again, you guys know that. You understand that. 
just remember that talk radio is old, but it is new. It's always new. It's, it's, it, 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 it's on the fly. That's why it's loved so much, because even though you're covering something that's already in the news, you do give a different angle. You do have that passion. Uh, people are able to interact. All of this stuff you guys already know. Uh, getting into the system, moving against free media, um, they're going to openly, and, and they have called for an FCC fairness doctrine over the Internet, and they're going to do that by converting everything to wireless and then claiming they can regulate uh, that spectrum, which you know that fight's going on now. Uh, they're also going to go from covertly uh, engaged in propaganda placement uh, to directly breaking in over your broadcast, and, and you're like, that'll never happen. They'll never pass socialist health care. They'll never bomb another country. This is what they plan. And your, your BlackBerry, your cell phone, everything is going to have the president popping in on it and government text alerts to fearmonger you. That's how the system is planning to do this, the emergency alert system, all of it. And uh, they're going to basically uh, terrorize talk radio, but also they're breaking talk radio right now, and then they're going to come in later with, oh, we'll stop breaking in except in really bad emergencies, but uh, we'll start paying you for not just public service announcements, but government broadcast. So, and, and, and you're going to be there broke, needing it, and, and the manager's going to hate it, but... You know, now we're six hours a day, government uh, news, because they're paying the bills. So you got that. They're openly all the white papers on that. They're going to try it. Okay? You notice everything this government does is what you've already heard about in Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany. You're like, we've seen that before. We've seen cameras and jackboots and black uniforms and checkpoints and people being frisked. And p folks are calling me going, how did you know the TSA uh, was going to be on the streets? Well, they told us eight and a half years ago they had press conferences. It's on C-SPAN. They're going to, how'd you know they were going to be at school proms? Because they, they, they're, it's a national security force. This is, this is it, folks. I mean, you're toe-to-toe -to -toe with the real deal. The ruling class has committed crimes from here to Europa. I mean, billions and trillions of miles of crimes, okay? And they have got to set up a police state. They've got to shut down free speech. They've got to stage terror attacks. And they're going to do it. And whether you believe I'm a kook or not about that, those terror attacks are aimed at your liberties and your freedoms, just like Hitler firebombed the Reichstag and attacked Gleiwitz to start the war with Poland. And we always hear Hitler just attack Poland out of the blue. It's a historical fact that he blew up his own military base on the border. WikiLeaks two years ago released the Army Manual on how to stage terror attacks. That's something you ought to pull up. The government admits it's real, and they say, we are going to find who released that. We're going to arrest him. They're saying it's not Manning. Special Forces Army... Uh, Captains and above are taught how to conduct false flags. So grow up, people. Grow up. These people, these globalists don't care about you. They're going to eat your lunch. They're coming for you. So decide, is it your kids, your wife, your husband, your liberty, your freedom, or are you going to make believe and buy into the delusion that you're part of the power structure? And, and, and maybe kiss up enough to be part of that power structure for a little while longer. Not me. I'm going head up against these people, and I don't care if they kill me. And that's what people recognize. I love my life. I love my life. I love life. I have such a passion for life that I'm ready to die for truth and beauty and goodness. You understand that? I love life so much that I don't care if they kill me and water the tree of liberty. I'm nonviolent. They want to cut me down like Darth Vader cut down Obi-Wan Kenobi. So be it. They want to try to assassinate my character. They want to try to destroy me that way. Good, keep attacking. Nobody buys what they say. you got to decide, are you with the people or are you with the establishment? Are you with the folks that everybody hates or are you with the people? We're sold that being cynical is a armor, is powerful. We're sold being little corporate drones is how to get ahead in life. Well, America wasn't built by being cynical. America was built by liberty and passion for truth and adventurism and rugged individualism. That's what it was built by. And I am an American success story. I am nothing special. I'm somebody who got angry about folks coming after my liberty and, and coming after my freedom, and I decided to stand up and find ways to reach the people to warn them about what's happening. And the fellow back here said, get to the point. The point is, tell the truth, you'll have listeners. The truth is, be passionate, you'll have listeners. It's not even so much the means and delivery systems. I mean, if you don't have employees 
who are passionate about updating your Facebook or putting out YouTube videos or getting the word out and, and you know, engaging in full spectrum uh, uh, you know, attacks through the media on the corrupt system. If you're not in an info war, you're not in the war. You're not in the real world. There is a war on for your mind and at the end of the day, uh, people will recognize truth. And it's just that simple. So if you tell the truth, your industry will survive. If you lie to yourselves about the attack on free speech, you will be phased out and eliminated. The old media system is a dying dinosaur, but you are seen as one of the only dinosaurs that they uh, are not trying to save, but that they're trying to kill. So you need to realize, whether you believe it or not, you are not in the camp of the New World Order, and they want to get rid of you. So that's the important message here today, is it's not just how are you going to survive by uh, uh, reaching out to people and how are you going to thrive, it's how are you going to unify people with passion and become truly political, uh, not just uh, basically following the little marionettes uh, that are fighting with each other with the limited talking points and scripts. Get outside of it, cover more issues, and tell the truth and you will win and your children will have a future. Thanks for having me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to begin the talk rumble briefly. If I can have all the rumble participants take their place on the dais, that would be fantastic. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? Go to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv for the latest headlines and cutting-edge information.